I'd be too shy. Ash, get over that. I'd be mortified. Get over that, for God's sake. And you feel the better of it after. And God, so will she. Tip her up with the blood when it's warm. In like a lion, and out like a lamb. And now, for God's sake. Oh, the right ram. Oh, God, the right ram. Will you two come in and close the door there? For God knows I'm cold enough as it is. Did you see the solicitors? Well, what do you think I've been doing all day? And there's no bones about it. The house has to be sold. And that's all there is to that. Irish women are, in fact, remarkably pure and clean. Remarkably pure. And that's not to be found anymore in Germany, that great purity. But here you have it. You yourself possess it. That look in the face, the eyes. And one knows that such women are not corrupted. One knows it here. When I meet Irish girls and can recognize at once their essential purity, then I am touched, incapable of a base thought. I have great reverence for Irish women. Stop that. Get away, get away out of that. Imogen? Come up, Imogen. I must talk to you. What ails you? Nothing ails me. Why? You don't look so well. Do I ever look well? I didn't sleep very well last night, that's all. I'm going to visit the graves today. It's after the anniversary. Why not?
grand evening. Oh, it is indeed. Grand, thanks be to God. Do I trespass here at this hour? Oh, not at all. Yeah, not at all. If you have the whole place to yourself. Don't let me interrupt you if you have work to do. Oh, faith, I have that. I'm on my way to a grave that needs attention for an anniversary tomorrow. That's why I'm carrying this fork. Do you not know me? You don't mean to say that you've forgotten me. I don't know. Who are you? Don't you remember Josephine? Your old gardener and bailer man. Are you Joseph? I am Miss Helen. Yes, I remember you. Ah, I well remember her sitting on the summer seat with a bowl of eight apples. And when I came into the yard with a fine jackrabbit for her dinner, she never spoke a word. He just took it be the hind legs and handed me an apple. An apple? <laughs> oh, I'm telling you, she was a race hero. <laughs> Who? Miss Emily. Herself beyond. Many's the time I heard your poor daddy, God rest his soul, singing and laughing to himself above in the fields. Oh, grand, smart, hardy man. Poking about again. Poking about as usual. I've eyes in my head. I won't go out again. I won't go down again. I'll stay where I am. I'll stay here in my bed. <laughs> I'm no good without you. Your lovely body. Love of all my life and all my senses. Days are passing. Years could go by. Oh, my love. 
the happiness we had. Your lovely body. Love of all my life and all my senses. Otto Beck, student. How do you do? Ah, yes. You're the person who's staying at the back lodge. Yes. I've rented the back lodge for five shillings a week in order that I can complete my thesis. Ah, yes. You are Miss Imogen Langrish, I think. I am, yes. What star is that? Venus. I thought it was Hesper. Hesper? No, no. Unmistakably Venus. The brightest of the planets. A planet, in fact, not a star. I thought they were the same. The same? The same as what? The same as each other, planets and stars. Decidedly not. Planets are closer than stars, for one thing. And nine of them revolve around the sun against a background of constant stars that do not move. How does one know it's Venus, you ask? Well, because it's the brightest of planets, and because it's in the position it should be, if it is Venus, moving in the direction Venus ought to move in. How then can it be anything else but Venus? I see. What country do you come from? I come from Bavaria. You speak English very well. Thank you. I learned to speak it as a child. My mother was a great Anglophile. I've never traveled very much. I was at school in France near Poitiers many years ago. You speak French? I get no opportunity to practice. Let me hear your pronunciation. Je sens toujours les houblons mouets des pluies. First class. Who is playing that record? My sister, Helen. It's very beautiful. Would you care for some tea, perhaps? That is very kind of you. Not at all. That was Gary Kirchhoff singing. Yes, I think it was. Please go in. I won't be long.
Please sit down. But he won't be long. Charming room. How do you do? That worked very well, didn't it? Thank you. I am making investigations into 17th century Ireland and Irish customs. Who are you? Yes. Such investigations, of course, involve philological studies into the story of Ossian, with reference to Goethe's time, the Brothers Grimm, Hebel, and Haman. Oh, is that so? That is so. I will show it to you one day. I'd love to see it. Of course, I will have to translate it for you first. I write in my native language, German. But this is quite exciting for me. I haven't been to a theater for ages. So I'm looking forward to it. 
It will be interesting for me to take an intelligent Irish woman to see a Swedish play performed by an Irish company in English. The man possessed a certain ferocity, I grant you. But his performance remained tentative. As for the woman, it seemed to me she lacked totally true depth and a proper understanding of the role. It was much inferior to a production of the piece I remember seeing in Dusseldorf, where the values of the play, I must confess, were properly embodied in the characterization and the polarities inherent in the work understood. Oh, really? Yes. A disappointing production. I apologize. Oh, not at all. What exactly did you think of the work yourself? It didn't mean very much to me. Interesting. Is there no other? No. There is not. The taxi is outside my range, I'm afraid. Well, what now? Wait. I have just remembered. Yes, we are very near. There is a place I sometimes stay at. A friend of mine. You can certainly have a bed there for the night. He is away, I happen to know. There will be no problem. What about you? I will make other plans. Please, there is no other answer. Come. I don't know what's happened to me. He's right at the top. Just a minute. Make yourself at home. What kind are these? Tropical blooms, stolen from the botanic gardens. My friend wanted them for details in the painting. He's a painter. What a big easel. Well? Mm, yes. And this? Mm? Mm-hmm. And this? She's bursting out of her skin. Would you like a drink? Oh, yes, please.
is an interesting painter. He's away all summer. Until he returns, the place is ours. Ours? <laughs> what on earth do you mean? Proceed. Your health. Yours. I suppose you'd call this an attic. Attic? I've lived in attics. One in Swiss Scottish London, I shall never forget. I had started working on my thesis and was starving. When? When? Years ago. One long wet winter and one long hot summer. A hen coop. In winter, I closed the skylight and kept the gas ring on. By the end of the winter, my face was bluish gray, even a kind of green. Terrible. How awful. In summer, the place was a furnace. And there I was writing my thesis. The only solution was to prop the skylight open, drag my table under it, set a chair on top of that, arrange my books on another chair alongside of that, and work with my head stuck out of the roof. Now, that was an attic. But, of course, the rent was only four shillings a week. What a dreadful existence. The life of a scholar is lived within a very narrow compass, in mute abstraction and solitary drudgery. The wonder is that Swiss Cottage didn't kill me. No. Here I am, as you see, sound in mind and limb, I'm glad. Sound in mind and limb. To go no further than that. <coughs> in the morning. Who is it? Shannon and his trollop. Excuse me. to eat in the kitchen. Those people. Eating. Wait.
What is it? Do you not trust your otter? you naked. I want your clothes on. No. Will you give me nothing but your mouth? Don't harass me! my time, I'm not well. Is that all? All? Isn't it enough? It's my condition, my time. You meant to me. No! You're naughty. You're a naughty man. You're a very naughty man. Would you like some coffee? Now that's a good idea. And then the nurse said, Fred, and it was green blancmange. God, I said I couldn't touch that. And who are we here? Maureen Laid. Hello. Barry Shannon. Imogen Langrish. Have a drink now. Thank you. Did you hear I've just come out of the fever hospital? A bout of scarlet fever laid me low. Look at Barry. It did. But did you hear this? There I was, lying there with a temperature of 102 in the shade. And I heard this voice, you see, from down the ward. Martha. Martha. I'm not well at all. And then I heard this other, you see. What is it? Dolly Dream. And then Dolly Dream said, Oh, Martha. I can't feel in me toes and <laughs> 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 We've just been to the play at the gate. What's that one like who plays the wife? Bad. <clears throat> ah, no, no, no. It'll do you no harm. Even if it kills you. Will you talk me up too, my darling? All the way. All the way. What's that one like who plays the wife? Oh, yeah. Yes, sir. Bad. I'll tell you another thing, Piers, too. Drink up, sweetheart. And here's to you. Do you know what else she is? She's a bloody pain in the arse. The last time I saw her, she was going on about the sole manier she'd had the night before at the Red Bank. And how the day after she was down with stomach cramps, Christ knows what else. All told in great detail. Well, those are not matters of much interest. Pish and flatulence. What? The Irish theatrical tradition was once a very great theatrical tradition. What the hell do you know about the Irish theatrical tradition? God almighty. <laughs> I know every damn thing there is to know about it. Why don't you take that stinking crate off the table? 
There's a lady present. Do you know Lord Fordham? No, I don't actually. Why not? I hear he's very stout. <laughs> Is that why you don't know him? You refuse to make his acquaintance because he's stout. What a remarkable attitude. She didn't say that, you bloody idiot. At least she can talk. I was beginning to think she couldn't talk. <coughs> Christ. I can't hide it anymore. You can see it on every street corner in this country. Insanity. That's what's under the skin. All the brave words and all the brave faces are unable to keep it from bursting out. And that's a fact. German who discovered parthenogenesis in bees. Zierzon, a clergyman. Now oh, this stuff about the right season and the wrong season, never in rubbish and pub chat and claptrap. What do they know about women? This fellow told me he had two brothers monks. Damn fine monks they are, too. Fine, damn great monks. <laughs> Wrong bloody season and the right bloody season. <laughs> Makes us all sound like bitches on heat. Among bats, which have connection in the autumn, the sperm can remain dormant in the uterus throughout the winter and impregnate the ova in the spring. Partha, the genesis. Another one of nature's bastards. And it's only a fool like you will tolerate him. I'm an exception. I look lovely in the morning. Syrupy. Well, I could well imagine. <laughs> I myself am indifferent to politics. Absolutely indifferent. I've played Jane Eyre for Christ's sake. I think the only reason they talk about the Sacre Coeur is, is, is because it's situated up there on the top of Montmartre. That's all. My professors were Edmund Herschel lecturing on philosophy and phenomenological investigations and Martin Heidegger lecturing on philosophy. University of Freiburg. <laughs> Take the case of Mohammed II. Why doesn't she say something? Why doesn't she say something? She's not opened her mouth yet, except to inform us that Lord Fordham's too bloody stout. That's an insolent piece of information for a start. And now she just sits there, sulking. Nobody's sulking. Shut your mouth. 
It's you I'm talking about. Wake up and say something for Christ's sake. Condescend all that much, will you? You bloody Anglo Irish shite. That's the sum of it. Coming over here and ruining the bloody country. Do you think we don't know? Coming here tonight and boring the niggers off the lot of us. Full of arrogance and hens. You haven't even got the guts to milk a bloody cow. <laughs> Vous êtes un homme. Au quoi Are you well off? Rich Irish heiresses? <laughs> Irish heiresses. <laughs> Do we look it? Well, certainly your manner. 
The house leads one. No. If it's money you're after, you're wasting your time. We had it once. At least Dada had it. But I'm afraid we've come down in the world considerably. Since those palmy days. I'm sorry, palmy days? Oh, you know, when we were well to do. Palmy days. Curious expression. That's good. Go on doing that. All right, that's enough. I want to tell you a secret about myself. Something no one knows. Shall I tell you? Very well. At one time, I used to take air baths in my skin. Air baths? Yes. I get out of bed and take off my nightdress and put on a raincoat. I would slip out of the house to cross the meadow into the plantation. Here. I'd take off my coat. I'd walk around in my shoes. Sometimes I keep my coat on and walk about opening and closing it. It was wonderful on a hot night, but I loved it when it rained, too. I lay on the grass in the rain. I liked it when men on bicycles went by. They didn't know how close I was to them. Once a drunk went by, he kept stopping, muttering. I was crouching in the ditch by the hedge. I could have touched him. Tell me, that first time we met, had you anything on then, under your raincoat? That crepuscular hour when first I heard your angel footsteps? Not a stitch. Hmm. Imagine. I got up in such a hurry this morning. I forgot to put anything on underneath. Show me. I will not. Just for me. Don't look. What are you doing to me?
Irish lice. They've had their last great times with you. Village here, for instance, Killer She. Oh. Do you know the origin of the name? I do not. It comes from Bishop Auxilius, coadjutor to St. Patrick. The kill or church of the same. Thus you have kill or she or killer she. Hmm. Thank you, that. I must get to rest coffee. It was formerly the residence of Chevalier Wogan, a Jacobite and member of Dillon's regiment in the Irish Brigade. He was the man who rescued Princess Clementina Sobieski from Innsbruck and carried her back to Bologna to marry the old pretender. Good gracious. Hazelhurst has a very interesting derivation. It's from the Old English Hirst and the Middle Dutch Horst. Hazel Hirst. Or Horst. What are you doing? Writing. What? Nothing of any importance. How are you? Perfectly well. <sighs> Isn't the weather beautiful? I'm thinking of making a blackberry pie. Shall I? Why not? I mean, would you like some of it? Me? What have I got to do with it? 
food doesn't interest me. I'll make it anyway. Perhaps you'll like it. Yes, I might. I might like it. bottle of gin to celebrate. To celebrate what? It's you. It's your name. They printed it. They liked it. They admired it. Why else would they print it? It's worthless. It's superficial. It's nothing. But I can do better. Well, you are doing better. You're working all the time. Yes, I am. I shall complete my thesis, of course. I shall complete it. And you have me. Yes, I have you indeed. A great solace. Archery in ancient China was played traditionally to the beat of music. The contestants were allowed four arrows, but could only fire at the proper beat of the music. The Chu dynasty, in fact. Listen. It's high time you had a bath. A bath? Can you climb? Of course, where? To the bathroom. But you must be quite sure which window you're at. Otherwise, you might end up on top of Lily. your eyes. They are remarkable. You are so gentle. Dinner. Helen! What is it? There's flames out there. They're burning the branches. We're selling some of the trees. Excuse me. 
I must attend to nature. One of the heresies of Johannes Scotus Origina was that the sexual organs would not be resurrected on the last day. His students, so the story goes, alarmed by the boldness of his thought, stabbed him to death with their pens. Not with their penises. How much do you get for a tree, may one ask? Two pounds. Well, you see, we couldn't go on running the place at a loss and pay the men their wages. So Albert Feeney had to be dismissed. Galvin and Flynn drove the remains of the herd to the cattle market in Dublin. Feeney went. Some time after. You have a nice nature, a nice, kind nature, and very white skin. Goat. Most white. Oh, darling. Most white. Most. Do you recall Maureen Laid? I'm not likely to forget her. She tried to kill herself. Almost did this time. They had to use a stomach pump to get about a hundred aspirins out of her. At least she has the grace to try it on only when there are people about. Sister Helen is what one might call a recluse, is she not? She lives her own life. She has her own thoughts. What are they? I can tell you. About you, some of them, perhaps. About your life. She probably thinks I'm a total fool, but nobody can change that. So she doesn't try. And Lily. What does she think about? Nobody knows that. Very interesting. Ah! What was it? Squirrel. Why the hell did you shoot that?
How do you expect me to catch fish? The apple tree. Apples? You didn't take them by any chance? I took some, yes. You might have asked me. It's my father's orchard. I took one when I was cutting the hedge. I was hungry, so I took two more. I took three. There were eight on it. Nine. There were nine. One was bad. Well, eight or nine, what does it matter? They've gone. You were underhand about it. Even you must appreciate that after 12 hours of abstinence, the lower intestine stands severely in need of solace. Don't be impertinent. Am I being impertinent? I was not conscious of it, I assure you. You say you took three. What happened to the other five? I suppose they walked off the tree by themselves. You're an imbecile. You haven't paid any rent for ages. We don't ask you for it. Did I give you enough? Are you never satisfied? Happy birthday. Happy birthday. This is a great surprise. Thank you. Imogen cooked the whole dinner herself. It's very good. Oh, it is. I've made a cherry pie. You like that? When I was a girl, I did. Yes. I remember that. Oh, sure, we're not all that old. What a long time since we all had such a grand dinner together. When Imogen carved the joint, it reminded me of Dada carving the joint. Do you remember how Dada carved the joint? He was very serious about it. Oh, well. It was a serious matter. Biddy used to bring round the gravy boat on a wooden tray. She did. I want to sleep. I want my rest. How long was Biddy with us? All her life. Do you remember Dada laughing when that very stout gentleman, what was his name, in his braces, chased the ball at the tennis match and fell with such a crash? All 19 stone of him. Bill Ardlam was his name. Bill Ardlam, ah, that's right. My goodness, he was a big man. They couldn't have let him play tennis anyway. Looking for compliments from you, honest to God, it's like boring down a mine. I am expected to make you pretty speeches. What is it? Have I done something wrong? Tell me what I've done wrong. Nothing at all. 
Do I no longer excite you? Is that what it is? Oh, you excite me, certainly. It's only... Only what? You grind your teeth at night. Oh, is that a fact? Well, what about you? What about all the lousy, filthy, degrading, disgusting things I have to put up with from you? What about them? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Helen. Happy birthday to you. The revised title for my thesis. Read it. Das Oceanische Problem und die tatsächlichen Volksmythen und Gebräuche Irlands im 17. Jahrhundert. Unter besonderer Berücksichtigung des Werkes Goethes und der Gebrüder Grimm. Eine sozial philologische kritische Studie. Herr Dr. Otto Bernhard Beck, Phil et Rappel et Habil. Good gracious. What does it all mean? The oceanic problem and the actual folk sagas in 17th century Ireland, with special reference to the work of Goethe and the brothers Grimm, a sociological, philosophical, critical study. What a mouthful. When will it be finished? I hope to bring it to a satisfactory conclusion in about two years' time. Pour me a drop more. I didn't know you had a second name. Bernhardt. Bernhardt, I like it. Do you ever miss Germany? I do not look back. I am contented as things stand. But you must miss it sometimes. You're not a machine. Look at my position. Here am I, a poor scholar, with free lodging, free fuel, peace and quiet, all my bodily needs attended to, so that I can get on with my work. Why should I miss Germany? Besides, I'm not young. I'm 35. I'm getting on. But if you had the means, would you not go back? After all, you're so cut off here, aren't you? You have no friends. You only have me, and I'm poor enough company. Uh, if I had the means, that would be different. I would go back to Freiburg University and study under Herschel. Nothing would stop me if I had the means. Higher education in Germany is beyond criticism. Excellent. Really excellent. Better still, to study under Heidegger at Marburg. Philosophy. Comparative psychology. Phenomenological investigations. 
That would indeed be wonderful. You are right, of course, I am cut off here. There's no music, no whatever. One feels its absence. Even the mattresses are of inferior quality, hard and uncomfortable. What do you miss, apart from the mattresses? Schnarren. I beg your pardon? What? What does that mean? What? What does that mean? What does it mean? It means whores. Munich whores. Whores? Why do you miss them? You have me. What do they do that I can't? Or don't? Or won't? This is a futile line of inquiry. You miss your Munich horse. Well, I'm the bloody best whore you'll get in this part of the bloody Emerald Isle, I'll tell you that. No, no, you're quite wrong. Irish women are, in fact, remarkably pure and clean. Remarkably pure. And that's not to be found in Germany anymore, that great purity. But here you have it. You yourself possess it. You look in the face, the eyes, and one knows that such women are not corrupted. One knows it here. A man might sometimes have filthy thoughts about girls. That's natural enough. But when I meet Irish girls and can recognize at once their essential purity, then I am touched, incapable of a base thought. I have great reverence for Irish women. What about Molly Cushion? Who? Molly Cushion. What are you talking about? I'm talking about that snotty-nosed, short-ass bitch from the village, Molly Cushion. I'm talking about that non-entity, that prostitute. You can't call anybody a non-entity. I can call her anything. Any human being has his or her innate dignity. That slut, that dirty bitch. What are you thinking? I was just thinking what a boring summer I'm having. This is you. Going to seed. What is the name of that fellow we met in Dublin? Doonan. Or Noonan. Sheehan. Shannon. Shannon! You're so soft. Soft, spineless insect. I can feel you beginning to curl up at the sides. Say if it doesn't rain now, we have these carpets out.
idea. I've been to Breen's for a few drinks. I'm going to bed. Which bed? Ours. Ah. Will you come and hold me? Will you hold me? Of course. Can I help it if I'm not feeling well? the rhubarb I had last night. Could you at least look at me? Can I get you something? Could you pour me some of the cordial in the kitchen and some water? It might relieve it. rest. I'll leave you for a little bit. I have an appointment with some people. Try and get some sleep. You'll feel better for it. If you leave me now, you needn't come back. I told you I have an appointment. You need never come back. You can get your meals elsewhere. I have an appointment with some friends. You have no friends. I do have friends. Fishing friends. Should be in bed. Oh no. I'd be better doing things. Would you ever set the fire for me? I thought you had an appointment. 
Can't you make up your mind? No. Shall I make it up for you? I'll send for the rest of my things, if you'd be so kind. You're not needed here. Don't come back. You're not needed here. going to rent the cottage. Rent of what? We've been a month without rent. For God's sake, we've been half a year without rent. Nothing at all. Why? Are you going to eat breakfast? No, I'm not. I'm not obliged to, am I? I'll eat when I'm hungry. Yes, you'll do that, surely. I'll leave you then.
Yes, what is it? Could I have a word with you? Surely. What is it? I was just wondering why you... I mean, if you... If I what? Well, I just wondered. You wondered what? Have you been in my room? For what purpose? Well, it's of no importance, really. It's really of little importance. So. father's tenants also. There are ten in the family that have nowhere to go. On the other hand, I can't afford to be soft. Or for that matter, daft. You decide for me, Louisa. Come on now, you decide. Exoremus pro anime, family tui. Quam hodia de hoc seculo magrere usici, et non tredes eam manus inimici, neque oblivis carius infine, sed dubius eam a sanctis angelis susici, et a patrium paradisi perducia, et quia inti 